Hello, I'm Mr. Purcell, and today we're going to be working problems from our math, uh, Foundations of Math final quiz review. And let's see, first problem says express in terms of i. So that's giving you a hint. There's an imaginary number here. Well, the square root of a negative is an imaginary number. And the square root of 121 is 11. So 11i is our first problem there. Let's see, problem two says simplify the square root of negative 8. The square root of negative 8. Well, notice how I'll put the negative in red. The square root of a negative is an imaginary. So we're going to have an i here. Then we need to simplify square root of 8. Well, the biggest perfect square that divides into 8 is 4. So we think of this as 4 times 2. If you're following the colors, I'll write this in standard form which puts the i in front of the square root. The square root of 4 is a 2. Then we have the i. And then we have the square root of 2. So the square root of negative 8 is 2i square root of 2. Let me get rid of that. 2i square root of 2. Check it. Problem three says use the quadratic formula to solve 2x squared minus 11x equals 1. Well, in order to use the quadratic formula, you have to have a zero on one side. It needs to be in that standard form. ax squared plus bx plus c equals zero. So I'll write it like that by moving the one over by subtracting it from both sides. And a is two, b is negative 11, c is negative one, We're going to be plugging into this. Negative b plus minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac all over 2a. So I'm going to replace the b with negative 11. So we have this blue minus and then a black minus. Minus and minus becomes positive. 11 plus minus the square root of b squared. Well, let me think, do those, that b squared in your head. And if you can't do it in your head, if the numbers were too large, maybe, hopefully you know that. I think we've already seen 11 times 11. 121. And negative times negative is positive. So I'm just writing 121 in place of the b squared, then minus 4 times a times c. a is 2, c is negative 1, all over 2 times a. 2 times 2 is 4. Okay. Now let's simplify underneath that square root symbol. 121 minus 4 times 2. Oops. Messed up. 121 minus 4 
times 2 times a negative 1. That's going to be uh, plus 8. So 121 plus 8 is 129. So I'm going to replace all of this with the square root of 129. Let me write it all in one color here. 11 plus minus square root 129 all over 4. Now, can I simplify the square root of 129? So any perfect squares that divide evenly into 129, 4 doesn't, 9 doesn't, 16 doesn't. Of course, 25 doesn't. What about 36? 49? You can go on as long as it takes for you to convince yourself there's no perfect square that divides evenly. 129 divided by 64. So we can't simplify the square root of 129. So this is our answer. 11 plus or minus the square root of 129 all over 4. Oops, let me get this out of the screen and clear that. So here they are. It's a big fraction. 11 plus minus the square root of 129 all over 4. Okay. Number 4. <clears throat> Problem 4. Solve the equation. And it says don't forget to check. But by that they mean they want you to check and make sure that you're not going to get a denominator of 0. 7 over 4y minus 3 equals, let me pause it. Okay, 7 over 4y minus 3 equals y, no, equals 4 over 9y. Well, I think on this one, I'm just going to cross multiply. 4 times 4y is 16y. 4 times a minus 3 and minus 12 equals 7 times 9y is 63y. Well, this is just a linear equation, so I'm going to move that 16y over here, put all the y's together. We have negative. 12 equals 63 minus 16. Is that a 47? Why? Oh, sorry about that. I cross multiplied 16y minus 12 equals 63y. So I'm going to isolate the y by moving the 16y over here. 63 minus 16 is 47. Now divide both sides by 47. And I think we have it. y equals negative 12 over 47. y equals negative 12 over 47. We've mentioned if everything subtracts out along the way and you just get 0 equals 0, there's infinitely many solutions. If everything subtracts out and you get 0 equals uh, some other number, then there's no solution. Five. Oh, there's a greater than symbol in this one. So this looks like it's going to be a cut point problem. So problem number five. Write it down. 
x squared minus 12x plus 27 is greater than 0. So type your answer in interval notation. Well, if you have a less than or a greater than, in order to solve that inequality, you do the cut point method. First of all, we find the solution cut points by solving it as if it were an equals. This is a quadratic equation, so we will factor it, x and x. Second sign is plus, so two of the first. 1 times 27, or 3 times 9. 3 and 9. Then set each one of these factors to 0. And we get x equals 3. And when I isolate this x by moving the 9 over, I get x equals 9. There's no denominators here, so that we don't need to worry with denominator cut points. For the solution cut points, you look at the symbol to decide between open and closed circles. And it's going to be open because there's not an equal sign on there. <clears throat> so let's draw a number line. Label 3 and 9 with open circles. We know it's going to alternate because we didn't have any repeated factors. So just test one of those intervals. I always like to use 0 when testing. And 0 always lies between negative and a positive. It wouldn't be between 3 and 9 or bigger than 9. So I'm testing this interval. When I say test, I mean plug it into the original problem, putting a zero here. We'd have zero, zero squared is zero. 12, minus, uh, 12 times zero is zero, so we have zero minus zero plus 27 is greater than zero. So 27 is greater than zero, true or false? Is that true? False, true, write your answer in interval notation. Remember, always put parentheses at infinity symbols. And the answer is the shaded interval. I'm always shocked when students write the crossed out interval. Crossed out one means no, that's wrong, that's not an inter answer. Parentheses, negative infinity, comma three, close parentheses, union, parentheses, nine, comma, infinity, close parentheses, check your answer. Oh, there's another inequality symbol there. There's a greater than symbol. So we're going to be doing that cut point method again. And that's number six. X minus 17 over X minus 18 is greater than three. <laughs> Hmm. There's a problem similar to this on the other review, and if you watch that video, I uh, miscopied it, and I had to redo it, okay? So let me check and make sure I didn't miscopy it. X minus 17 over X minus 18 is greater than 3, okay? Okay. To find the solution cut points, I put an equal sign and then either multiply both sides by x minus 18 or cross multiply 3x 
minus 54 equals x minus 17. I'll move this x over here by subtracting x from both sides. I'll move the 54 over here by adding 54. So 3x minus x is 2x. Negative 17 plus 54. Is that going to be a positive 37? Divide by 2. Look at the original problem to decide between open and closed circles. Since there's not an equal sign, we say it's an open circle. So we'll have an open circle at 37 over 2 on our number line. Now, the denominator cut point, this is different from the one we for problem 5. On problem 5, there wasn't a denominator cut point because there were no fractions. But here there is. The denominator can't be 0. So x can't be 18. With denominator cut points, it's always an open circle. You don't want to plug 18 in here because you'd have 1 over 0. Punch that into your calculator. It'll give you an error warning. Now, be careful about labeling these numbers on the number line. Make sure you're putting them in numerical order. 37 over 2 is 18.5. If you think of it like that, then, okay, you can see that 18 is the number to the left. Now, let's test another interval. I'll test 0. Zero is between a negative and a positive. So right here, test zero. Zero minus 17 would just be a negative 17. Zero minus 18 is a negative 18. Negative over negative is positive, but that fraction 17 over 18 that's certainly not bigger than 3. It's less than 1, isn't it? So false. Oops, I did not put my little open circle there. There. False. True. False. And we use open circles at parentheses and infinities. No, use parentheses at open circles and infinity symbols. So 18 comma 37 over 2. Parentheses. 18 comma 37 over 2. Right arrow. Comma. I mean parentheses. Okay, here, give the, given the function h described by h of x equals x plus 13, find each of the following. <coughs> well, the first one, h is 0, that means plug 0 in for x. You don't need to do any writing here. Plug in a 0 in for x, 0 plus 13, that would just give us 13. Now find h of negative 19. Well, that means plug a negative 19 here in place of x. So that's negative 19 plus 13. Negative 19 plus 13. Is that a negative 6? Negative 6? Oh, what about this one? H of negative 13. Plug negative 13 in for X. Here. 
Not that it's this one's any harder than the other ones, but I want to have something written there. You're plugging the negative 13 in for x. So you'd have a negative 13 plus 13. That's going to give us a zero, isn't it? Just trying to show my thought process there. Oops. Okay. Now I'm going to write this one out. Find h of 4. Plug the 4 in for x. 4 plus 13. What number will I type there? 17. Okay, now find h of b plus 20. Is that what it says? Find h of b plus 20. <clears throat> But in place of the x, in place of this x, I'm going to put this b plus 20. But be careful, you still have the plus 13. So b plus 20 plus 13. Well, you could add the 20 and 13 to get b plus 33. So b plus 33. Oops. I how, oh, I think this is the last part of the problem. B. Not B plus 13. B plus 33. B plus 33. Hmm. Find the slope of the line that goes through the given point. Number eight. One five and seven eight. We said that slope is rise over run, and slope is undefined if you have a vertical line. If, in other words, that run is zero, if you have a zero in the bottom of the fraction. So one five and seven eight. The slope formula looks like this. M equals Y subscript 2 minus Y subscript 1 over X2 minus X1. So these are not exponents, okay? Now, all this y2 and y1 means is first, uh, yeah, uh, you label each order in pair. First x, first y, second x, second y. Okay? Remember, ordered pairs are x, y. So it's the second y minus the first y over the second x. Minus the first x. So 8 minus 5, 3. 7 minus 1, 6. Don't leave that as 3 over 6. You can reduce that fraction to a half. If that bottom number had been a 0, then you would have said 8 to 5. Hmm. Solve the following system of equations using the elimination method. Okay, let me write this down. It says use elimination, but I suppose if you wanted to use substitution, you could do that too. 9x plus 2y equals negative 11 and 2x minus y equals negative 1. 9x plus 2. So if everything subtracts out along the way and we just have a number equal itself, like 0 equals 0, 
then there's infinitely many solutions. If everything subtracts out and we just have two different numbers equal to each other, like zero equals five, then there's no solution. With elimination, you add vertically. If I added vertically right now, I'd have 11x. And what is that? Uh, 2 minus 1 plus y equals negative 12. Well, no, we're going to add in such a way that one of the variables is eliminated. We want these coefficients to be the same number but with opposite signs. The easiest way to get the same number but with opposite signs would be if we multiply that second equation by 2. Have we left the first one as it is? 9x plus 2y equals negative 11. And 4x minus 2y equals negative 2. Now if we add vertically, Notice how the y's have been eliminated. And we'd have 13x equals negative 13. Divide both sides by 13 to get x equals negative 1. The answers here are ordered pairs. So... Here's your x value. To find your y value, just plug into one of these equations. I think I'm going to use the first one. If I plug x equals negative 1 into the first equation, 9 times negative 1 is negative 9, plus 2y equals negative 11. If I move that negative 9 over here, We'd have 2y equals negative 2. Divide both sides by 2. And it's just a coincidence that we're getting the same number here and here. Okay. But you write your answer as ordered pairs. The x is the black negative 1. And the y is the blue one. Negative 1, negative 1. Parentheses, negative 1, comma, negative 1. Problem 10, it says, solve using the substitution method. 4x plus y equals 15. And 5x minus 2y equals 9. If you were going to use elimination on here, you would multiply through by 2, and that would eliminate the y's, very much like number uh, 9. Okay. Multiply through by 2, that would eliminate the y's. We're not going to do that. We're going to use substitution. Why? Because it tells us to. With substitution, you got to be able to isolate one of the variables easily. We can isolate this y by moving the 4x over. And then take this 15 minus 4x and plug it into the other y. So we have 5x minus 2 times 15 minus 4x equals 9. So we have 5x minus 30 plus 8x equals 9. I would add the 5x and the 8x to get 13x. So the minus 30 equals 9. Add 30 to both sides. I'm isolating the x. 
and divide both sides by 13. 39 divided by 13 is 3. Plug this number in for x to find y. Probably the easiest to plug it in right here. And if I'd been trying to find problems that wound up with the same answers for x and y, I wouldn't have been able to. But here's one. If you plug in the 3 for x, 4 times 3 is 12. So we have a ordered pair, black 3, comma, purple 3. Again, they want to always be the same number. That's a rare event. The ordered pair is parentheses 3, comma, 3, close parentheses. Now we have some word problems. Number 11. A basketball player scored five times during one game. She scored a total of six points. Two for each two-point shot and one for each free throw. How many two-point shots did she make? How many free throws? Well, what we're asked is how many two-point shots and how many free throws. So I'm going to make a table. How many two-point shots and how many free throws. Those are what we're told to find. So I'm going to call the number of two-point shots X, the number of free throws Y, And we're told that she scored five times during the game. That's the total number of times she scored. So, that's the total of the number of two-point shots plus free throws. Now, there's another point column here, the point column, which each two-point shot is worth two points, duh. And each free throw shot is worth how many points? One. Okay, one point for each free throw shot. And what total are we given there? How many points did she make altogether? She scored a total of six points. Six points. So the two equations are staring us in the face here. X plus Y equals, oops, equals 5. And then to get the point equation, she's getting two points for every two-point shot, one point for every free throw. So 2X plus 1y equals 6. And this is one, the numbers are so small, I bet some of you are figuring it out without doing any algebra. Okay. I'm going to solve this with elimination by multiplying this top equation by negative 1. If I multiply that by negative 1, I'd have negative 1x minus 1y equals negative 5. And now, I'm eliminating the y variable. Negative 1x plus 2x. 2x minus 1x is just x equals 1. So let's make an answer column. X is 1, 
So she threw five, made, scored five times altogether. That means she got one two point shot and four free throws. One two point shot and four free throws. Problem 12. A woman bought some large frames for $15 each and some small frames for $9 each at a closeout sale. If she bought 16 frames for $168, how many of each Find how many of each type she bought. Well, what they're asking us to do is figure out how many large frames she bought and how many small frames. So we're going to set this up similar to how we did those quantity. You want to know how many large frames and how many small frames. You'll notice how I keep going back and forth to the problem. And then instead of a points column, we have a cost column. The large frames cost $15 each. And the small frames, $9. So the large frames $15, the small frames $9. Oh, those little smudges are dollar signs. Okay. Now we better have some totals. She bought 16 frames total for $168. So the 16 is going to go the sum of the quantity column. And the 168 is the sum for the cost column. Oops. So the 16 is the total for the quantity. And the 168, oops, I wrote 169. The 168 is the quantity, I mean the co total cost. Okay, let me make sure I wrote all those numbers correct. $15 and $9, 16 frames total, $168. Okay, well, let's write our equations. X plus Y equals 16. And then $15 for every large frame. For instance, if she had bought 10 large frames, she would have spent $150 on those. So it's 15x plus 9y equals 168. Well, I'm going to multiply this top one. I think if I multiply it by negative 9, that's going to get me fewer uh, negatives when I go through it, Multipl eliminating the smaller one. We'd have a negative 9x then a minus 9y, 16 times a negative 9. That would be a negative 90 plus 54. Is that going to be a negative 144? I'll recopy the first, I mean the second equation. What I was doing here, maybe it'd be better to write it like this. I'm multiplying by negative 9. Okay. Now I'm going to add vertically. We better eliminate one of the variables we do. Also, we better not get a fraction. And I don't think you can go into a store and buy a fractional number of uh, picture frames. Negative 9 plus 15. That would be a 6x, negative 144 
plus 68. That's one, excuse me, plus 168. So 168 minus 144, is that going to be a 24? Divide both sides by 6. And get x equals 4. So now logic out the answers. If x is 4, and she bought a total of 16, how many small frames did she buy? She bought four large frames, and is that going to be 12? 16 minus 4, so 12 small frames. So four large frames, 12 small frames. Four large frames and twelve small frames. Okay, number thirteen. Solve this equation. Two to the two X minus. 7 equals 16. Well, we've solved a lot of equations this semester. We've solved linear equations, quadratic, those have the x squared, rational, have fractions, radicals have square roots in them, logarithmic equations have logarithms in it. This is called, a, this one here is an exponential equation. The variables in the exponent. First thing you should try to do is write it with a common base. How many twos would I need to multiply together to get a 16? Don't say 8. It's 4. 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 is 16. So, if the bases are equal, the exponents have to be equal. So, 2x minus 7 has to equal 4. So, I'm going to move the 7 over to get 2x equals 11. And then divide both sides by 2 to get 11 over 2. Seven over two. Hmm. Oh, okay. Number fourteen says. Let me get rid of this calculator. It says for this equation, create a table with at least three ordered pairs. Well, they're giving you the table right here. So let's do that first. This is an x y table. Plug these numbers in for x. y equals x squared. Negative 2 times negative 2 is a positive 4. Now plug in a 0 in for x. 0 times 0 is just 0. Plug in a positive 2 in for x. 2 times 2, 4. Let's check our answer. And then it asks us to graph it here. I'll say click to enlarge the graph. And this equation that we're graphing has an x squared in it. So that means quadratic. And we have three points here, three ordered pairs, x, y, x, y, x, y. If you hover around, this point right here, can y'all see that? It says three point quadratic tool. So I'm going to click that. And now go through and plot those two points, those three points, starting with left two up four. Left two up four. Then plot the second one, zero, zero. <coughs> Oh, pardon me. And then finally, the third point, this one right here, 2, 4. Right, 2, uh, 4. Oh, 
I'll say save it and check it. Okay. Let's see. Oh, this one, same instructions. We're going to plug these numbers again. Okay, so plug in a negative 1 in for x. Be careful. Negative 1 times negative 1 times negative 1. I'm looking at negative 1 cubed. You know what? I'll write it down. y equals x cubed plus 1. And we have this xy table. We're going to plug in negative 1, 0, 1, and 2. When I plug negative 1 in for x, negative 1 times negative 1 is positive 1, times 1 more negative 1 is a negative 1, plus 1, that's given as 0. Now let's plug a 0 in for x. 0 times 0 times 0 is 0, plus 1 is 1. Now plug a positive 1 in for x. 1 times 1 times 1 is 1, plus 1 is 2. Finally, plug a 2 in for x. 2 times 2 times 2, don't say 6. 2 times 2 is 4, times another 2 is 8, plus 1. Is that going to be a 9? I'll put these numbers in. 0. One, two, nine, and check my answer. And then we're going to graph this one. Now, this isn't quadratic, it's x cubed. And we don't have three points, we have four points. So if we look around, like we use the three-point quadratic on the previous problem, right there, four points cubic. We have a cube, we have four points, that's what we're graphing here. So you click it, and now let's start, I'm going to plot the point, negative one, zero, left one, up zero, notice in the yellow rectangle it tells you what point you're on if you have a hard time telling then 0, 1, 1, 2, notice the yellow rectangle at the right hand side of the yellow rectangle that tells you the point you're on, and then 2, 9, it's hard to tell, so look at the yellow rectangle and I add 2, 9, yes, So I'll say save it and check it. Okay. Hmm. Well, I'm just coming off of a serious illness. So, for, so I apologize for the coughing and interruptions. But uh, that does it for the final exam review. Excuse me, the final quiz review. So I hope that uh, whenever you're watching this, you have a lot nicer weather than the dreary, cold, rainy day that we have in here right now. But uh, thank you for watching and bye-bye. Uh,